In this video, we are going to show you how to set up a rotary joystick with retro pie and main. I have my Raspberry Pi there. I have a keyboard and I have my Glenn's Retro Show Akari Warriors joystick. You can find this joystick at thunderstickstudios.com. I will leave a link in the description if you want to pick one up. It is one of the only USB rotary joysticks on the market. I will also leave a link to my review of this joystick in the description as well. This joystick does come with a full user manual, very descriptive, and has QR codes with videos on how to set it up. Now this video will mirror some of those videos, but I do have one important difference and that is I will not be using MAME 2010. I will explain why later, but it is suggested to use MAME 2016 or higher when using this joystick. Now during this demonstration, you will see a color notification. That is the mode that we are in while we're doing this demonstration. To start, we're going to go into RetroPie and we're going to configure our input first. And to do that, you simply hold down a button on the joystick. The configuring menu will come up. And as any other controller or joystick, you're going to map it the same way in RetroPie input configuration, identifying up, down, left, right, A, B, etc. Now, on this joystick, I did add a separate start and select button. The joystick box housing does not come with specific select and start buttons, but you can use one of the six buttons if needed. To skip a certain button map, just simply hold down the A button and you will get not defined. Now that we're done configuring the input, let's move on to the next step. We are going to go into our RetroPie menu and we are going to select RetroArch and go into the base RetroArch configuration. We're going to go down to inputs, port one controls, and we're going to verify that device index, mouse index is the bail and industry setting. And then we're going to scroll down to left analog directions. Now, the reason we have to map these is because we have to bind inputs in RetroArch so it is recognized in the game when using libretro MAME cores. RetroArch can be used as a standalone front end. But with RetroPie, it's used in conjunction with the RetroPie front end. To map these inputs, we are going to be in the green keystroke mode. And we're going to want to make sure we get the input mapped to hat 0 up, hat 0 down, hat 0 left, etc. Now to make sure it's hat 0, when you're in the green mode, there is a quick mode change option, which is simply to tap the mode button once while it's green and it switches over to the POV joystick hat mode, and then you can bind the hat. While mapping, continue to hit the green button once to switch back to joystick, then the green button again to map hat, then green button again, and so forth until you are finished mapping all hats. Once done mapping those four directions, back out, and if your joystick doesn't go up and down, hit the green button once to get back into the correct mode, and your joystick will work inside RetroArch now. Before we exit RetroArch, we're going to want to make sure we go to Settings Configuration File and Save Current Configuration. Make note where this file saves. We're going to talk about this later in the video. Note that all these settings we are doing, including the MAME settings we will be doing shortly, only have to be done once. We're going to exit out of the RetroArch menu, and we're going to head over to our games and start setting up our MAME controls. I have already added some rotary joystick games in my arcade folder. We're going to be taking a look at a couple of them. We're going to do MAME 2016 in one example and current MAME in another example. We're going to start with current MAME and I'm going to show you how to map the controls in current MAME first. We're going to launch Akari Warriors and then we're going to grab our keyboard and we're going to hit tab key in order to display the MAME menu. You can hit the tab or escape button to get out of the menu as well. We're going to go into input settings, input assignments, this system. You can enter each menu by hitting the enter button. And what we're looking at here is the defined keys or joystick controls that are mapped to each direction or button. And in this case, analog settings as well. 
we're going to go and we're going to clear out all the default settings by hitting the delete button. And if you want to go back to the default settings, just hit the delete button again and it will bring back the default settings. So we're clearing all the settings that we're going to change. We're going to clear them all out first and then we're going to remap them with the joystick. Now, there are two ways to do this in easy way and the correct way. There are also videos by Thunderstick Studios in the manual that show exactly what I'm about to show you as well. Now we're gonna start in the keystroke green mode and we're going to map each direction by simply hitting the A button or the enter button on the keyboard and then pushing the direction on the joystick to get a mapping. In this case, we're gonna see Joy-1 D-pad up, Joy-1 D-pad down, etc. Once done with the directional inputs, we're gonna leave the button settings alone. Then we're gonna leave position analog as none and position analog ink and position analog deck. This is where we use the rotary part of the joystick. We hit enter, turn it to the right once, hit enter, turn it to the left once. Now, early in the video, I said, do not use MAME 2010. And that's because these two settings do not keep in MAME 2010. For some reason, they revert to the default every time you restart the game. It's a bug in MAME 2010, and it's been confirmed. We exit out after those are mapped, and we go down to analog input adjustments. Here, we're gonna set three different settings. The first incremental decremental is going to be changed to zero, and then down to positional sensitivity and change this to 100. Now, you can do player two as well if you want to at this time, and we're gonna leave positional reverse to on, and I'll explain to you what that does in a moment. Now we're gonna start the game and test the controls. You can see the joystick works fine and turning the rotary will shoot in the direction you want, but there is one minor detail in here with the way we set it up that is technically not correct. And that detail is every time you turn the rotary, you'll notice that the player slightly moves to the right and, and then to the left if you go left. And that's because we have mapped the spinning rotary with the directional input as well. So we're doing two things while we spin. We're spinning the joystick to turn them and we're telling the character to step left or step right. It's not too noticeable, but it's not correct. So we're gonna fix that. And in order to do that, we're gonna go back into our main settings and we're going to erase the player one up, down, left, right, and we're gonna change these. We're gonna use our quick mode change by tapping the green button once, the green mode button once, and we're gonna switch modes. And then we're gonna push up and you'll see that it changes to Joy-1 up instead of Joy-1 D-pad. We're separating the D-pad from the rotary and we will not get that issue after this. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure all your directional inputs say Joy-1 up, and we did that by switching the mode with a quick button change by tapping the green button, mode button once. Now when we back out, your joystick may not move, uh, your character may not move, so you're gonna to have to hit the mode button again to switch back to the correct mode so all the functionality works. Now that we have separated those binds, you will see that the character will stand still and rotate as we turn the rotary. He does not move left or right anymore. We turn the rotary eight times. He moves in a full 360 direction, just like the game should. Now the directional input should work, the rotary should work, and you're off and running with Ikari Warriors. Now we're also gonna show you MAME 2016, and I'm gonna use Victory Road as an example here. We launch the game and switch the core to MAME 2016 Libretro. Launch the game and we're gonna go back into our MAME menu by hitting the tab key on our keyboard. Again, each game has to be done once individually, and then the settings will stay forever. You'll notice that MAME cores have different menu looks based on which MAME you're using, but that's all just visual differences. We're still changing the same inputs. We're gonna go back in and I like to clear out all the settings that we're changing and then remap correctly. Now in this example, you see that when I pushed up, I got keyboard up. 
this is not the right setting you want in this example. You're going to want to do the quick change mode button by tapping the green mode button once and then pushing up and getting joy one up and then joy one down, etc. Those are the settings you want to see, not keyboard up. Now, when we get down to position analog, it's none. Position analog deck. This is where we're going to change back to the mode we were originally in and spin it to the right. And now we get keyboard right and keyboard left. Once we're done mapping those controls, we go back to analog controls and we switch these to zero for digital speed and then up to 100 for sensitivity. Go back, exit out into the game and test our controls. Now here's where that uh, reverse on or off comes into play. Positional reverse, I noticed that my joystick, when I spin it to the right, it's going left. So we're going to turn this positional res reverse off. And uh, that will correct the issue. Simple as that. Now we start playing. And everything works exactly as it should. Again, if your joystick doesn't move in the very beginning, hit the green mode button once. And everything should work fine. You can see spinning eight times spins him 360 degrees around just like the game should operate now in this last example i'm going to show you how to map the game frontline this is slightly different than the last two examples we have done so pay attention closely and we'll set this up properly for you we're going to use mame 2016 in this example launch the game again tab on our keyboard and then we're going to change these eight directional settings. I'm going to clear them out to none first again by hitting delete. If you hit delete again, it will revert back to the default settings. Important to know that if you screw something up, you can get back to the defaults. Now in this example, we're going to use the POV hat joystick blue module that is included with your game. and we're first going to set right up, right down, etc., to be keyboard up, keyboard down, keyboard left, keyboard right, and that's by using the joystick. And then we're gonna use our little board for the POV hat, and we're going to set these as joy one up, joy one down, left and right. And right now we are in the blue mode. For frontline, you want to be in the blue joystick POV hat mode. Once done setting up those eight directional inputs, the game should work flawlessly now. You'll have eight directional shooting directions by spinning the rotary joystick, and the character moves in an eight-way joystick fashion. Works great. Oh, look out for that boulder. Now, before we exit, I want to go over one troubleshooting tip that may be very important to you. And if you recall in the beginning, I explained that our retro arch input changes save to the opt retro pie configs all location. And in here, you'll find a retro arch config file. When we take a look at that, you're going to want to make sure that the Y X axis settings have been changed to the zero hat input setting. If you're in the main menu and your joystick up, down, left, right is not registering when you're in the certain mode, then it's because your retro arch access changes that we did in the beginning did not stick or save correctly. So in checking this file, we just want to make sure that those hat inputs have been registered. As you can see here, they are registered correctly in this retro arch config file. So I should be good to go. But where I ran into a problem was my RetroPie build was looking into another folder, the opt RetroPie configs arcade folder for the RetroArch file. There is a separate RetroArch config file in the arcade folder that will override the one in the all folder. So you're just going to want to go down and make sure that the hat inputs saved in that RetroArch config file as well. And if there is an issue, you can copy your RetroArch file from the all folder 
to the arcade folder and then your inputs should register correctly. If you need any help, ask it in the comments and I will respond and try and help you. Hey, leave a thumbs up and thanks for watching this tutorial.